The yeah. McClo the McClo the McCloskey prosecution is the anatomy of corruption. Viva Fry, Montreal litigator turned YouTuber, and this is Winnie the Westie guarding the office. All right, for those of you who don't know, there has been some news in the Patricia and Mark McCloskey prosecution case. But before we can get into the news, we have to do an overview of the situation for those of you who may not be totally familiar with it. Now, I am not exaggerating when I say this. The McCloskey prosecution is the anatomy of corruption. It is the anatomy of corruption. It is the poster child for prosecutorial abuse. And in order to fully appreciate this, we've got to start from the beginning. The summer of love 2020. The 2020 summer of love, ironically enough, was filled with a lot of almost peaceful protests. There were Black Lives Matter protests all over the United States, including St. Louis, Missouri, where this story gets started. From the BBC, it was 28 June, and just as dusk was beginning to settle over the city of St. Louis, Missouri, a group of several hundred protesters converged at the intersection of a busy six-lane street called King's Highway. It is a main thoroughfare in a well-to-do section of the city known as the Central West End. Some pushed bicycles, some carried Black Lives Matter signs, nearly all wore masks as they chanted, sang, and began moving up and down the street, which was shut down to traffic. Their ultimate destination was the home of the mayor of St. Louis, Lydia Crewson, several blocks away. So this group of several hundred masked protesters are looking for the mayor's house and they enter a gated community and pass by the home of one Mark and Patricia McCloskey. And what ensued next was caught on video, caught on camera. Immediately Mark and Patricia McCloskey became infamous public enemy number one. And if you haven't seen the video, if you are the one person out there who has not yet seen that video, here is some of the coverage of that incident. Mark McCloskey and his wife stood on their patio Sunday night pointing guns at a crowd of protesters. I was terrified that we'd be murdered within seconds, that our house would be burned down, that our pets would be killed. McCloskey says he and his wife called 911 and grabbed their guns as they heard the crowd approaching from afar. The St. Louis couple called Mark and Patricia McCloskey became folk heroes to many across the country after they were confronted by a mob, a dangerous mob, outside their home and returned with firearms to protect it and themselves. So that is a video of some of the incident and some of the media coverage of the incident. It made its way all the way up to Tucker Carlson on Fox News. And a lot of people were saying out there that they were just peaceful protesters walking down a public street. Apparently they broke down a gate into this gated community. Mark McCloskey showed photographs of the busted down gate that the protesters broke down in order to get into this gated community. That may or may not change any of your opinions depending on what your opinion already is. It's just important to know the facts that this might not have been just a group of protesters marching down a public street. Regardless, when the incident occurred, you saw some of the video, but this incident generated one image which is going to live on forever, and that image is this image. There were other photographs of the incident from different angles, but this was by far the most popular image which captured the essence of what happened. And this incident didn't just make this one particular image. This incident generated some of the best memes ever. All right, so that is as much of the humorous side of this incident as there is. After this, it is all downhill to the embodiment of political corruption. After the incident, after a group of several hundred masked protesters busted down a fence to enter into a private community, Mark and Patricia McCloskey grabbed their guns in order to protect their property from what they felt to be an imminent threat. They were actually the ones who faced criminal charges. Mark and Patricia McCloskey were indicted on felony gun charges of unlawful Awful use of a weapon and I'm gonna read the provision of law for very specific reasons which we're gonna get into in a bit because their indictment was upgraded later on. 2005 Missouri Revised Statute Section 571.030 Unlawful Use of Weapons Exceptions Penalties. A person commits the crime of unlawful use of weapons if he or she knowingly, and we skip to section 4, exhibits in the presence of one or more persons any weapon readily capable of lethal use in an angry or threatening manner. Readily capable of lethal use. In the context of the investigation and the indictment, the McCloskeys had their firearms seized. The only problem was apparently that the weapon that Patricia McCloskey was holding was not readily capable of lethal use. Apparently, the pistol that Patricia McCloskey was brandishing in an angry or threatening manner had the pin removed or was reassembled in a way that it could not be fired because it was used as a prop in a trial that Patricia McCloskey was a lawyer in. Oh yeah, by the way, Patricia and Mark McCloskey are both lawyers. 
So when the investigators seized Patricia McCloskey's pistol and discovered that it was not readily capable of lethal use because the firing pin had been placed in such a way that it, it couldn't be used. I don't know how guns work, but it couldn't be used. What did they do? They ordered the gun to be reassembled. Actually, sorry, they ordered the gun to be disassembled and reassembled so that it would be functional and readily capable of lethal use. And why would they do that? The working theory is that they did that because otherwise they would not be able to charge Patricia McCloskey under this provision of law which requires the gun to be readily capable of lethal use. But don't take my word for it. Let's read an actual correspondence from the context of this investigation as reported in some article that I'm going to read right now. St. Louis prosecutor ordered Crime Lab to reassemble Patricia McCloskey's gun. In Missouri, police and prosecutors must prove that a weapon is quote readily end quote capable of lethal use when it is used in the type of crime with which the McCloskeys have been charged. Assistant Circuit Attorney Attorney Chris Hinckley ordered Crime Lab staff members to field strip the handgun and found it had been assembled incorrectly. Specifically, the firing pin spring was put in front of the firing pin, which was backward and made the gun incapable of firing, according to documents obtained by Five on your side. Firearms experts then put the gun back together in the correct order and test fired it, finding that it worked according to the documents. And here is the document. The firearm could not be test fired as submitted. At the request of ACA Chris Hinckley, the firearm was field stripped and found to have been assembled incorrectly. The firing pin spring was placed in front of the firing pin, which was backwards and will not fire in this condition. The firearm was reassembled properly, test fired, and functioned as designed. No additional defects were observed. Let that sink in, people. The investigators found that the gun would not fire properly because it was assembled improperly, so they disassembled the gun and reassembled it so that it was fully functional in order to charge Patricia and Mark McCloskey. And then what do they do after that? They charge the McCloskeys with evidence tampering. From Insider, Mark and Patricia McCloskey, the gun-waving St. Louis couple who threatened protesters outside the their home have been indicted on weapon and evidence tampering charges. The firearm that Patricia McCloskey was pointing at the group of protesters was not functional in the manner in which it was assembled, so the investigators disassembled it, reassembled it in order to charge Patricia McCloskey with a crime, and then they get charged with evidence tampering. You can't make this stuff up. I mean, you could make this stuff up, but no one would believe it. And to break out the classic meme, because yes, there is more. But wait, there's more. The circuit attorney, Kim Gardner, the one who was responsible for the prosecution of this entire case, had been using this case as a fundraiser for her upcoming election. Prior to even charging the McCloskeys, Kim Gardner was using this event in fundraising documents to raise money for her re-election campaign. Let that sink in. So faced with all of this chicanery, Mark McCloskey made a motion to have Kim Gardner and her entire office removed from the case, and he was successful on that motion. Mark McCloskey was successful on his motion to have Kim Gardner and her entire office removed from the file, a special prosecutor was appointed, and Patricia McCloskey made the same motion a little later on because they had two separate judges for whatever the reason. Get this, not only did Kim Gardner lose, but she appealed the decision. She appealed the decision because she is so darn objective and able to prosecute this case without any impropriety or appearance of impropriety that she needs to appeal the decision in order to continue prosecuting this case. And after that lengthy dissection of the anatomy of corruption, Kim Gardner appealed her decision, and that is the news of the day. Her appeal has been dismissed. Again, from Five on Your Side, Missouri Supreme Court upholds judge's decision to remove Kim Gardner from McCloskey case. Special Prosecutor Richard Callahan will now oversee all decisions in the case after Missouri Supreme Court ruling. Gardner charged Mark and Patricia McCloskey with unlawful use of weapons charges as well as tampering with evidence. Their attorney successfully argued before Judge Thomas Clark that Gardner used the case for political gain after citing it in campaign fundraising emails before and after the charges were issued. Clark removed Gardner and her office from the case. She then appealed to the Missouri Eastern District of Appeals, which denied her writ. She then took it to the Missouri Supreme Court, which handed down its decision Tuesday. Quote, this is what we expected based on the careful, thoughtful ruling from Judge Tom Clark, end quote, said Joel Schwartz, attorney for the McCloskeys. The state Supreme Court did not explain its decision to deny Gardner's writ. Oh, the state Supreme Court did not explain its decision to deny Gardner's writ? That's because it doesn't require any explanation above and beyond what Judge Clark already explained. I already did a vlog on the subject, but Judge Clark's motivation to disqualify Kim Gardner from the file is self-explanatory. The entire situation is utterly obvious. It is utterly obvious because this is corruption at the highest levels for all the world to see. From Law and Crime, Democratic prosecutor and her office were kicked off criminal case against gunpointing St. Louis lawyer. Quote, the campaign emails demonstrate the circuit attorney's personal interest in this case, raise the appearance of impropriety, and jeopardize the defendant's right to a fair trial, end quote. Missouri Circuit Court Judge Thomas Clark II wrote, quote, among other previously described concerns, these email solicitations aim to raise money using the defendants and the circumstances surrounding the case to rally Ms. Gardner's political base and fuel contributions. While the collateral consequence of the emails 
may have been inadvertent or unintentional, quote, intention, end quote, is not a factor under the legal standard. The legal standard only requires that the court conclude that the conduct appears inappropriate, end quote. The conduct does not only appear inappropriate, the conduct is objectively inappropriate and it appears also to be objectively corrupt. Improper and corrupt and Kim Gardner actually appealed the decision in order to remain on the case notwithstanding all of the appearances of impropriety and outright corruption. So that is where the file stands now. It is going to be in the hands of a special prosecutor. Kim Gardner and her office are going to have nothing to do with it. And if we are making any predictions in this case, and I am, these charges are going to be dropped. It might be a slightly optimistic prediction, but I'm making the prediction nonetheless. After a special prosecutor comes in and reassesses the situation, I am predicting that these charges are going to be dropped outright. That is my prediction. And this video may have been somewhat repetitive if you have watched all of my previous videos on the subject. But as they say, in times of absolute insanity, the role of sane people is just the restatement of the obvious. This is corruption. This is corruption. This is corruption. This is pure corruption that needs to be laid bare for as many people to see if this corruption is ever going to get remedied. So share this video around and let the world bask in this outright corruption. All right. And with that said, I better go get a cup of coffee, go pick up the kids, go back inside, maybe take Winston for a walk. If you like my videos, you like my content, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell and drop a comment in the comment section below because it feeds the algorithm. Tina, you fat lard, come get some dinner. If you want to support the channel, all of the support links are in the pinned comment. We've got PayPal, Patreon, subscribe to our YouTube membership, etc. We've got merch. Keep calm and vlog on and other merch ideas. Robert Barnes and I do weekly live streams every Sunday. We do the sidebar on Wednesdays with a guest. We also have a page on locals, vivabarneslaw.locals.com. All of my videos are also on Rumble, but more important than any of that, take care of yourselves, check in on friends and family, make sure everyone around you is doing well. And it worked well the last time. Peace out, Winston. Peace out. Booyah!